Hey, Spirit of Faithians, we just wanted to give you a demonstration of how easy it is to check into our services using the mobile check-in feature in the Realm app. Simply go into the app, put in your email address and password that you established when you claimed your account with Spirit of Faith Christian Center, and once you've logged in, you have access to all of the news and notes and information that we're sharing, and you have access to our mobile check-in feature. To access it, click on the three dots labeled more in the bottom right hand corner of your app, select mobile check-in. Once you're there, you select the event that you are attending, click check-in and you're done. You're ready to experience the very best of what God has to offer here at Spirit of Faith Christian Center and we'll have the opportunity to know you were here with us. We look forward to seeing you in service. Have a great day. Sundays, it still gives me like the feelings of my grandmother's home. Oh, your old when school. When she old school, <laughs> when she would wake up on Sunday mornings, and my grandfather was a Sunday school teacher, and they would play Lionel Richie. Sing it. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Okay. <laughs> but welcome, faith partners. Welcome. I am Nikita Montgomery, and this is my husband. I'm Brian Montgomery. And we are blessed to just have the opportunity to serve at this wonderful ministry. I serve with the young queens, the queens in transition, the 13 to 18 year old young ladies who are, um, they're just gonna make an impact Amazing. in the world. And I'm privileged, I feel privileged to serve those young ladies. And what do you do? speaking of privilege, I am so privileged to be the leader of the men's ministry, which is thriving here at Spirit of Faith Christian Center. So all men, you should be plugged into what it is that we're doing each and every week because we are always doing something. So check us out. And, and ladies, I just want to say this, encourage your husbands, yep. your brothers, your sons to participate because we are the beneficiaries we are. of um, great men. So You are. I, I, I definitely <laughs> am. I hear this episode is sponsored by SOSBM. Spirit of Faith Bible Institute is sponsoring this pre-show. Listen, that is an amazing ministry, SOFBI. So it is our Bible college here, and their mission is to build anointed leaders who serve in excellence, integrity, and with a spirit of faith. And not only do they serve with those things, here's what's exciting, they live those things. If you live them, you don't have to worry about putting them on in your service. So come and join. If you haven't had a chance to attend college, guess what? That's your opportunity. Come get that word. And you don't word. have to take the SAT. <laughs> <laughs> join us Sunday through Friday at 6 a.m. for prayer. So six days a week at 6 a.m. If you've been around here for a minute, you know that we've been talking about prayer. So this is a perfect opportunity for you to kind of practice or experience those things that we have learned. You know, wake up 6 a.m. actually is early for me, but it's like prime time. I found that when I can get up because he's the early word yeah. in our house, um, it gives you an opportunity to just establish your day. So. Um, check out the information on the screen. Please join us six days a week, Sunday through Friday, for that 6 a.m. prayer call. If you need prayer, the prayer line is open 30 minutes after service. You can, again, call the number, fill out a request um, on the website, and we'd be glad to link up with you. And I was thinking, you know what's one of the easiest ways to learn to do something that you don't know how to do or are not comfortable with doing? What? Get around people who are and who do those things yeah. well and just hang around them. That Eventually, prayer session, it rubs off on you. Yeah, and it's helped by our intercession team. Yeah. 
So it's not just random, you know, people. These are, this is their call. These people, they pray. They is, is led by Pastor Deborah. And if you've heard her pray, you know um, that that is, that is her call to action. So um, hop on the call and, and, and join us. Yep. Welcome all first timers. So if this is your first time fellowshipping with us on a Sunday, please drop a one in the comments. We want to show you and shower you with a whole bunch of love to make you say, I have to attend next week again and again until you become a partner. Yes, subscribe to our YouTube page. So the, the best thing about subscribing, is not just so you can like get a whole bunch of emails, but it's so that you can stay tuned in and connected. The little alarm reminder goes off. I'm telling you, with all that I have to do, I need that reminder to say, hey, church is live. So go ahead and click subscribe, like it, share it with someone. And that's the, on YouTube. YouTube, Facebook, Facebook and, and Instagram. Instagram. If you have been following our Instagram, you know we have stepped our game up. Pastor Mike is doing reels. Make sure you follow him. <laughs> Dr. Diddy has Those her motivational <laughs> moment. So make sure you check us out there. Tell us where you're viewing from as well. So I spoke to the first timers, but uh, wherever you're viewing from, even if it's here local, anywhere in the States, anywhere international, let us know. We'd like to know, you know, where, we're, where we are reaching and who's connecting with us. Yes, and you never know. You may, you know, you may be watching from Alaska and find that someone else is also in Alaska. So it's a good way to connect and network. Blaze Kids is every week at 10 a.m. on YouTube. So if you are watching from afar, this is a great way to engage your children, um, to have them participate in something. I know my kids watch Blaze Kids for about 15 minutes every, every night, night before they go yeah, to they bed. It. So it's their way of, of getting that Bible study time in before they go to sleep. SWAT is every Friday at 7 p.m. on Zoom. For more information about Blaze Kids or to register for the Zoom link for SWAT, take a picture of the screen, the information is there. Q&T is this Sunday at the Brandywine location. It begins at 1230 and we are focused on health and wellness. So if oh, wow. you are registered, please send your queen in workout gear because we're going to get it in. You know, they're not too young to learn healthy habits, you know? Yeah. I love that. And make sure above, I would say above all, you stay tuned in and connected with our weekly services on Sunday, on Wednesdays, on Sunday nights as well and make sure you get the corresponding notes from Pastor Mike that go out every single week. So he teaches Multiple two lessons on Sundays, he nightcaps on Sunday nights, and all of that is packed into a PDF, hand delivered to your email inbox. So make sure you are receiving those, and make sure you're not just receiving them, but read them. Make sure you don't reviewing just read them, them, reviewing them. Live them out, apply them. You know, last week was jam-packed with like nuggets the mm -hmm. notes were were six pages long they mm -hmm. were great but he talked about a lot it's a lot that we can highlight here one thing that stood out to me and he he's been saying it, is that he has learned through this pandemic that a lot of people have had a better relationship with this building mm. than they do their bible and that's such a, a profound statement it actually connects with something it reminded me of something that he started to say a few years ago, as a pastor, he said that he refuses to pastor a biblically illiterate church. So when I think about that, we should not be church literate. We should be biblically literate. Mm -hmm. Being church literate is just going to give you like a form of godliness, but it's not going to give you the power that knowing your word is. And I'm not saying knowing your word in a way where you can just quote it but knowing it where the foundation of your life you get from the actual word. And people can see it, you know, you oh, can yeah, yeah. live yeah. it out. Like being church literate is more <laughs> church behavior, church culture. And I think, you know, for us, well, I, he, he went to church, but I wasn't <laughs> church. So when I came in, all I knew was like, okay, how do we do this? What are we gonna do? Um, but there are some people who are more accustomed to the, the ministry culture, and that is not going to keep you. If you have been around for the last two years oh, of this yeah. pandemic, yeah. you should know that just being in this building and knowing what to do from a church perspective, it's not gonna sustain you. What sustains us? The word. The word. The word sustains <laughs> us. The word sustains us. So check those notes out, review them, share them. You know, we randomly say, hey, babe, what did you think about yeah. what was said? Or what do you think about this statement? And it's a good way to chop it up. So make it fun, make it easy. 
take notes, ask questions. If you have watched Noonday Bible Study, you know it is very interactive. Pastor it Mike is. is teaching, reading the comments, reading the comments responding. Yeah. Make sure that you are reviewing the notes and asking, as he said last week, relevant questions. <laughs> <laughs> and I Don't love it because the last few weeks, he's also brought on his terrific teammates. Yes. His wife, yes. Dr. Dee Dee Friedman, and his yes. brother, Pastor Dwayne. Yes. And it's like sitting amongst. Father, I, I, son, and yeah, Holy Spirit. Yeah, it's, like, <laughs> it's off the chain, man. Father, son, and Holy Spirit. And they're just bouncing everything off of mm -hmm. each other, and their, their teachings are like sharpening one another, yeah. and then we get the benefit of that. And last week, Dr. Dee Dee harped on change a lot, yeah. how we are resistant to it. But she encouraged us. If you're resistant to change and you don't want to, she, she, she actually made a promise. She said, if you just hang in there, I promise you'll get to a point where you will look back and be grateful that you stuck with it. Absolutely, absolutely. So make sure that you are giving. Listen, your giving is your evidence. There, to me, there's no greater way to show how you trust God other than to, to give. Yeah. And it's not to limit it to money, but if you are giving of your tithe and offering, um, that is good evidence that you trust God. Um, also, stick around for our worship you must service. Stay for the worship Listen, service. The, the things are changing <laughs> around here. You know, we are moving to being more of a well taught and a, and a more didactic, is that the term yeah. that, that's been, being used? fashion um but worship is still a part of our honoring god um so pastor tim and his team they're still like hitting us with the jams every week so stay tuned don't forget to like share comment um throw your ones in and we will see you in service Allah. another day that god has made happy sunday ladies and gentlemen Greeting to those viewing all over the world. We welcome you here to Brandywine, Maryland. I got a question. Are there any lovers of Jesus Christ in the room? Are oh, you signified by waving your hand and shouting me? Somebody type in the comments, that's me. Praises. Yeah, I'm so glad you're in my life. Yeah, I'm so glad you came to save us. Come on, you sing that. Come on, throw your hands in the air and declare it. I'm so glad you're in my life. Yeah.
worshipers that where my worshipers at if you don't mind just stretching your hands all over the room wherever you're viewing at home just get them up as high as you can close your eyes and just begin to talk to them if you're grateful for the love of God shout right there for I spoke a word you were singing over me listen you have been so so good to me before I took a breath you breathed new life in me is anybody grateful you've been so so kind to me so I'm singing oh the overwhelming never ending reckless love of God Still I'm found Leaves the nine and nine I couldn't earn it I don't deserve it But still you give yourself away I'm worthy Overwhelming Never ending Reckless love of God hey! Oh your fault still your love fought for me can anybody stretch your hands and say you have been so so good to me when I felt no worth you paid it all for me listen this is why I'm happy cause you have been so so good to me
it to him. Give it to him. For the King of Glory is in this room. For the Holy Spirit is working in this room. Our ears are ready to hear the word that you have for us. Our tongues are that of a ready writer. Our hearts are ready to receive. For it is so, and so is it. Somebody open up your mouth and give it to us. Sunday to you. I'm Teresa Proctor here at Spirit of Faith Minister as well as the Director of Training with TQM and I'm so excited. Why? Because I have your announcements. Absolutely. Before we dive in, here's what we want to know. Your birthday or your anniversary, are you celebrating this month? Well, type it into the chat, a B or an A. We want to celebrate with you. Listen, the more that you celebrate in life, the more that you will have to celebrate. So happy birthday, happy anniversary. We pray that it is filled with the opulent blessings of the Lord. All right, yes. First timers, if this is your first time being with us, we want to acknowledge you, love up on you. So drop a one into the chat so that we can acknowledge that you are our VIP guest on today. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Listen, we already know that you're gonna probably most likely, if you don't have a pastor, you're gonna receive our pastor as your pastor. You're gonna become a part of our ministry. So welcome, 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 welcome. Virtual Spring Chapel service is scheduled on Tuesday, April the 12th at 7 p.m. This meeting will be for all SOF CC leaders. So we want you to mark your calendars. You have to be there. SOFBI, Spirit of Faith Bible Institute, will be sending out the link. So make certain that you look for the link and mark your calendar. And while we're speaking about marking calendars, mark your calendar as well for April the 16th. That's on a Saturday at 10 a.m. to join Sutton Fire, our fire ministry for our next fireside chat. Oh yes, I know it's always enlightening. So make certain that you email suttonfire at sofcc.org so that you can receive the link. So I know you've all been waiting for Resurrection Sunday. I know I have, I know I have. We've been waiting for Resurrection Sunday. So Sunday, April the 17th at 9.30. Listen, if you typically attend the 8 a.m. service, if you typically attend the 10 a.m. service, we want to see you at 9.30 a.m. on April the 17th, okay? Service will be at our Baltimore location as well as our Brandywine location. And if you need transportation, simply email us at transportation at sofcc.org. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Agape in Honor Week is coming up. Listen, April the 25th through the 29th, be on the lookout for ways that you can participate. Why? Because we're giving back to the community. We're serving, showing agape and honor, and you want to be a part for sure. Please keep the following partners in your prayers. They have a, a loved one that has transitioned, Kelly and Chris Davis, as well as Tia Marshall. We are praying with you and your family. If you have a loved one that has transitioned, please email us at rick.wooten at sofcc.org so we can do the same for you. So you're welcome to join us in person Sundays at 8 a.m. at our Temple Hills campus. 10 a.m. at our Brandywine as well as our Baltimore campuses. Remember, excluding Resurrection Sunday. And listen, feel free to tune in via Facebook or YouTube, our YouTube channel, SOFCC TV. And remember, on Sunday evening, 7 p.m. nightcap with Pastor Mike and our virtual Bible studies that's held each and every Wednesday, 12 noon as well as 7 p.m. Listen, Enjoy your Sunday and make this service remarkable. What's up, Spirit of Faith? It's your boy, YPK, and my homegirl. Miss Mookie. That's right, and we're here to talk to you guys very, very quickly about something exciting that's going on at Spirit of Faith, and guess what? Blaze Kids, hello. 
Of course, you know, Miss Moody, she's like the creative director of, of everything Spirit of Faith right now, but she's helping your boy out in Blaze Kids, and she's doing a phenomenal, phenomenal job. Well, thank All right? you, Pastor Kevin. Just, it's I'm... my honor to serve. Absolutely. So we have some exciting things going on. We've been virtually for a long time now, yes. right? We've been yes. on YouTube and Zooms and all that kind of good stuff, and the kids have been enjoying it. However, we are also back in person. Back in person. That's right. On oh, what Sundays? What Sundays we're Second back? Second and fourth Sundays, we are back in person. Second and fourth Sundays, we're back in person, and we want you to be a part of what God is doing in Blaze Kids. Sure. Contribute to be a part. You have gifts, you have talents, and things you want to offer up. We would love to have your supply. So if you're an administrator, a creative, a singer, dancer, a teacher. teacher, yes, or if you just love kids, period, which is like the biggest prerequisite yeah, we, of we, them we all. We need you to like, really love children. You yeah, got to really I, love I, children. I, I, yeah, it kind of like goes yeah. with the job yeah. description. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come yeah. be a part of what's going on in Spirit of Faith, Blaze Kids. Who do they email? Blaze.director. Blaze.director yeah. at SOFCC.org. Come give your supply, all right? We look forward to seeing you, meeting with you, and having you a part of the team. Until then, we'll see you later. Verse 37, whoever receives one such child in the name receives me, and whomever receives me receives not me, but him who sent me. This morning, we present four families with four children for dedication. The families will come forth, and any guests that have, been, have come to accompany them will be escorted to the front by our ushers. At this time, could we get the family of Grayson, Marshawn, Augustine to please come forward. Could we get the family of Michaela Grace Henderson to please come forward? The family of Jelani Renaya. Jerea Jones, please come forward. Wanna be just like me? Let me be a holy example. And last but certainly not least, Araya Okai. Pastor. These are the families presenting their children for dedication today. Akai. Araya. 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 So a lot of family here today. It's amazing. Good to see you. I'm grateful to God for this opportunity. 
I don't think I've ever seen this amount of family support ever in the history of my ministry. <laughs> Even those of you who did not have as much as others, I would act like they're all with me. <laughs> I pardon my seat. Um, however, I have to do what I need to do from this position. Um, you have been instructed concerning this matter by uh, other counselors I have been led to believe. Is that correct? Concerning this day? Mm -hmm. You all aren't looking too sure. <laughs> you have? Okay. And so a lot of the information that was disseminated there is the information that I want to reiterate. I think the most important part of what I would like to reiterate is the fact that there's coming a day when you're going to have to stand before God and give an account of how you have raised these precious gifts. The scripture has commanded us to raise them in the fear and admonition of God's own word. And as you have known and have heard, more is caught than it is taught. So there are some things I'm expecting, God is expecting to flow out of your lives more than your mouth. And I promise you, if you set up that type of environment, it will be an environment where your children will experience heaven on earth, where angels will reside and not feel out of place. Um, Dr. Didi is, I guess, we don't even handle no, babies these days. Anymore. We just lay hands on them. Yeah, uh, so give me some hand sanitizer to ensure safety, even if I, when I put my hand on them, just for your comfort um, and uh, convenience and safety, so you can feel all right about it. Not everyone is, is as comfortable, like you guys are wearing masks. That doesn't mean you're uncomfortable. That just simply means you're a mask. I'm not, others are. It's your prerogative. You have to be comfortable with Absolutely. where you are. Absolutely. It's according to your faith. You're going to have to have just as much faith as I in a mass and without a mass. So all of you who are here, please feel comfortable in whatever position. So I wanted to ensure that... Uh, your comfort level is not uh, invaded. Mm -hmm. I, I want to sanitize and keep my distance. Um, yeah, I think that's all I'll say about that. Give me the name starting with this young man on this end. That is Grayson. Grayson. Awesome. Grayson, that sounds like money. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's the Grayson family. Grayson got some cheerleaders here. You want me to come over here to take the picture? Yeah, come over here, and I'll just turn this way, and they can stand on one side or the other. Uh, Where yeah, the camera is right there. Where are you going, Dad? <laughs> are, are you Grayson Sr.? No, George. You're George. Yes, sir. How'd you come up with Grayson? You liked it, okay? And Marshawn, he thought it was an NFL name, so. Oh, he thought it was an NFL name. <laughs> oh, yeah, that is Grayson, and he is NFL. Man. That, doesn't he uh, play running back? He used to. He used to. Oh, and you liked him a lot. Liked him so much you named your boy after him. <laughs> All right? Peripheral, he'll do great and notable things in his life. Okay? 
Uh, come on, stand this way. Turn. Yeah. I guess he doesn't feel comfortable. He keeping his distance. But, but don't get all on me now. Turn Grayson around. Yeah. Hi, Grayson. All right, yeah, I bless you. And them Air, Air Force Ones he has on. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, boy. All right, thank you so much. Yeah, and who's this big girl? I, I love her, you know I love her. It should be others by now. You're working on it? Cool, hallelujah. How old is she now? Two. You remember what the devil tried to do? Yeah. He is a liar, isn't he? A real liar. And you got some receipts. Yeah, yeah, yeah you can clap about that. <laughs> I think, is that grandma clapping that hard? Yeah. <laughs> I love it. Your mom? Yeah, I love it. Don't we just love grandbabies, mom? Yeah. Mm -hmm. They're the bestest. I think we should have had them first. <laughs> and she's crying out there. What's her name? Michaela. Michaela Grace. Where's the Michaela from? It's a combination of our names. It's a combination of your name. My name is Tamika. My name is Hal. So Mika. Wait a minute. Your name is Hal. And so how you get Michaela? Mika. Y. Why? Yeah. L A H is his name. Woo! But it also means gift of God. It, it, she, her name also means gift of God. I'll go with gift of God. <laughs> okay, step up here, guys, and then make sure she's facing the camera. She's going to ask you when she gets older why was I having that mask on and Pastor didn't have a mask on? <laughs> She is absolutely gorgeous. She want her mask back. I believe she got a revelation. This is all about me. Uh huh. Uh huh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's your party. It's your day. Yeah, see all the people here for you? <laughs> She's a show off. Get her out of here. And Jelani? Jelani? Renaya? Renaya? Jura? Jure? Jones, I got it. <laughs> Give me all of that. What is that all about? She's a, uh, <laughs> she can't be a junior. So she I'm can't be a junior. Yeah, you there. were expecting a boy? No, um, I got my son, Joe Mike Jones, out there. Okay. Yeah, so I was expecting a girl. So okay. She decided to name her after me. To name her after you? Yes. In the female tense. Your name is? Jaylon. Jaylon E. Jaylon. Jaylon. Yeah. Oh, and she's Jelani. Yes. Okay, mom. <laughs> Come on over. Let's take this picture. Yeah, how about that? Hi, baby. Hi, Jelani. Yeah, take Jelani. Jelani. Hi, cutie girl. Yeah. Hi. <laughs> I hate not being able to touch them. Mm -hmm. I want to so bad. <laughs> hey, girl. Is, is she the last for you guys? First and last for me. First and last. <laughs> OK, let's take this picture. Oh, she was looking. OK, you want to smile? One more smile. Make some funny faces. 
<laughs> she can't see. <laughs> she said, that's it. Uh, she said, that's, that's it. All right. <laughs> oh, God bless you, man of God. Thank you. Yeah. And lastly. Uh-oh, yeah. uh-oh, uh-oh, uh-oh. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. We got the rowdy crew here with us. <laughs> It's a lot more where? On the other side. On the other side, where? Where? Oh, everybody, oh, they're all over there. Oh, all right, they're all over there. Y'all going to cut up at the graduation. I know. just have a miracle baby. What do you mean, miracle baby? I lost four babies for her. Yeah. Oh, wow. You lost four babies? Yeah. For second trimester, so she's my miracle. In the second trimester? Yeah. You lost four babies. That I had to deliver. Mm. That you had to still deliver. Yeah. Well, give God some praise. <laughs> no wonder we're so elated about her. Now, give me the name. Araya. Nadede Okai. Araya Nadede Okai. Araya Nadede Okai. Araya Nadede Okai. I love it. I love it. What's your name? Joshua Okai. Joshua Okai. I thought you were going to tell me something like. <laughs> you messed up my whole plan. I love Joshua. God bless you, sir. That goes to show you, because after two women of God, most people would have said, you know what? I'm, I'm not, I'm, I'm not going to go through this again. And then the third came about. And then the four. How did you dare even think about a fifth attempt? Called on God. Somebody yeah. over there, the word is. Oh, that's all. Praise. Praise who, who are these two people up front here? Godmother. 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 That's my sister. I'm God. the general manager. You, you the general manager. <laughs> Godmother. God, <laughs> the GM. The manager, yeah. I got it. I got it. Joshua, do you approve of all this nonsense? <laughs> I stand with you. <laughs> Joshua said he stays out of it. Just, <laughs> Josh, Joshua, right. very Let smart man. It. Can't fight it. Can't okay. Beat it. Well, to God be the yeah. glory. Yeah. Step up here. Yeah. Step up here. Yeah. Woo, to God be the glory. Um. Make some form of contact contingent upon the comfortability that you have. Now, this family, stay with family uh, so that you are comfortable with one another. Uh, praise be unto God. Uh, yeah, because we're going to decree some things over your babies and, of course, your homes mm -hmm. as well. Praise God. Yeah. Yeah, so Father, we thank you. We give you glory and we honor you today. We thank you for these beautiful babies that are here. We present them unto you. We dedicate them unto you, Father. We thank you that no weapon formed against them shall prosper, that they will dwell in your secret places Absolutely. and abide in your shadows all Absolutely. the days of their life. Absolutely. Father, I pray now that they will never live a lifestyle of a sinner, but they will serve you all the days of their life. Father, that they will use their life to win many people to the Lordship of Jesus Christ. Amen. I thank you, Father, that no sickness, disease, or anything shall come down their dwelling. Amen. Father, I thank you that no illegal substances shall ever enter into their bodies. Father, that they will keep their virginity until they are presented to their spouse. Amen. Amen. Father, I thank you that they will live a first-class lifestyle, that they will never have any lack. Absolutely. Father, that means that you will provide for these families, that you will provide for these parents, that you will give them insight on how to create wealth. Father, I thank you that they will have the best of education, they will have the best of care. 
I thank you, Father. I come in agreement with what pastors already decreed, that angels can reside in their homes and not fill out a place. Father, I thank you for the favor that you've given them with you and with men, that they will have straight A's and be obedient students all the days Amen. of their life, Father, Amen. all the way through school. In the name of Jesus, Father, we thank you that you've given us them to guide and protect and to nurture them. Father, I pray for this support, this witness, this team, this family that's here that's surrounding absolutely, them. Absolutely, absolutely. I pray now that they will have insight and they will have the wherewithal to even help provide whatever information, whatever tools, whatever finances, Father, absolutely. that they can provide to even help to assist to raise these babies. Father, I thank you that you will be glorified in their lives. Satan, we serve you. Notice you have no place and no authority over them or their families. And we bind you now in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. name. And Father, we'll forever give your name the praise, the glory, and the honor for all that you shall continue to do in their lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. <laughs> praise God. We have some goodies. We have some goodies that we want so to present. we consider them dedicated and consecrated unto our God. Uh, do you, where are these this gifts? This morning, to? we present to the families the Lamb of God blessing, blessing back buckets. Where, will they get them out? They're going to get them now. Oh, they're going to get them now? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Praise God. This is just a small small token and gift from Didi and I in this ministry to your babies. Now, this is your first child, Joshua? Your second? Your first? Okay. Are you going to have more? You're done? He could present. Well, while she was praying, uh, I didn't sense your being done. I, I don't know. Uh, the GM is with me. Oh. Oh, your auntie. Okay, the, your, your... Yeah, whoever the you people are. No, no, listen to me. Whatever you decide, it will not be fear-based. Mm. Because you can say no more out of fear. And I don't want fear to ever stop. To dictate. Mm. To dictate, that's the right word, to you what it is you desire in your heart. Okay? So the minute if you change your mind concerning that, please allow my office to know. Okay, I want a baby. I want another child. Uh, Joshua, you have a boy? So you're pretty cool with respect to that. You're like, yeah, yeah. Is he JJ? Josh Jr.? No, it's His name is Isaac. Isaac is here. Where is Isaac? I, oh, he's a big boy. <laughs> hey, Isaac. Man, Isaac can get a job and help take care of Elijah. <laughs> you know, Joshua, Isaac, and Ariah, and Elijah. Elijah. That's what we're going to call your boy. If you decide that, okay, I heard Elijah Michael. Oh, Lord. Yeah. <laughs> At first, I thought it was all God, but then when you put that on, I was like, it's all flesh. Give it up for all of these families who have... Watch your step. What's so precious that you know? Okay, let's go have that boy. Uh-oh, you dropped the lamb. Same thing they did with Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> 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 
got my iPad. Uh. Okay. One thing I was speaking to Dr. Didi about. Give it up for these families, man. I love it. I, your grandbaby. I love it. I love it. One thing. She said that's her grandbaby? One thing uh, I love about uh, baby dedication, it's a sign of a growing ministry. And even the ministry that has youth connected to it. There are a lot of ministries who very rarely have baby dedications. That's not a good sign at all because the, um, the life of the church is predicated on the youth that's coming in. And so we want to encourage all different types of, uh, can you share that? Mm -hmm. All different kind of um, activities for our young people. Uh, did you all hear about uh, Blaze Kids in the nurseries mm -hmm. opening back up second and fourth Sundays thus far? Don't you just thank God for that? I know I do. Uh, like, for instance, on first Sundays as such, uh, just try to do the best you can with your children. There are monitors like in, uh, there are no, there are no uh, monitors in the... In the areas. In okay. areas. You're waving, hey. Hey. <laughs> Good to see you all. Uh, uh, but I'm talking about in the restrooms. Oh. Are there television monitors in the restrooms? No. Uh, no, there are some in the others at Temple Hills or no? No, they took them out. Were they ever in there? No, it was I a sound. They, it was just It was sound. In Intercom. There. But there are areas that they can go and watch outside of the sanctuary. Mm -hmm. Okay. Because there's a lot of uh, children chatter going on today. And it's okay. It, we, we'll just have to do, we just have to do whatever we have to do. But I would ask that you try to do your very best. And if the child gets a little restless, then um, don't feel bad about having to get up and go to the four years or anything. Mm -hmm. And if you don't think that they are being noisy, just use the looks as your barometer. <laughs> you know, somebody's turning around looking at you and your child, that's pretty much a sign. <laughs> you know, because you don't know. You don't know you how. You get used to the noise. Yeah, you can get used to the noise. <laughs> and, then, and that's OK. And you all be kind to one another. Absolutely. I want to proceed. I understand that I'm not able to connect with Baltimore today. And I'm not altogether happy about that. Um, these technicalities that uh, seemingly arise so often here are just bothersome to a huge degree to me that I, I just don't I just don't understand nor do I appreciate. Yeah, uh, but. Uh, simply because I want the dissemination of the word to be, you know, laterally given throughout this ministry so that uh, we're all on the same page. 
um, with, with our lessons. Um, but prayerfully, we'll have it resolved uh, by next week. Uh, got a few scriptural references. If you don't care to write or to type, be sure that you will get all of our notes with everything I say in them before Wednesday. But don't become lazy and just rely on them. Have some notes to take out with you so that you'll be able to communicate exactly what you have heard prior to your receiving your notes on Wednesday. Every last one of us should be sharing. What did I just say? Every last one of us should, should be, be sharing. sharing information that we have received here by at least tomorrow morning. I would start today if I were you for specific reasons that the scripture has given us. Oh, my mouth feels so very dry. Give me something to drink, please. You got anything strong, strong as some beer, wine? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I got that for when we go in the back. I, uh... I've never seen in all my days so many drinking Christians these days. And I guess the liberty of God's word concerning that has released that particular kind of activity. Uh, but it's just quite frankly not, not my thing. Uh, but but don't, don't be judged in that respect. The Bible never commands you not to drink. The Bible just commands you not to be drunk. But a lot of people don't know. That they are. I guess they don't know they're drunk. <laughs> I ain't drunk. Your mama drunk. <laughs> that should be a sign to you. Okay, but but oh my gracious, I gotta I gotta get you. I I mean I mean I cannot plead with you enough the importance of an element of all of my lessons that you have to endeavor to embrace and to engage and make a part of your lives. I've told you in times past that understanding is divine comprehension in my heart that gives me the ability to repeat something. See, just that, Ooh, just, just, just that alone. There were many voices included and involved in what you just said to me. And that, that was not all the voices who knows exactly what my definition of understanding happens to be. That was just a few of y'all, but it was an adequate amount that has encouraged your teacher to know that information is being properly communicated and disseminated, or should I put the latter first? Mm. Communicated and or disseminated and communicated. Because first is given mm -hmm. and then it is received. Understanding is divine comprehension. Something at will. Whatever you do not understand, you will never be able to repeat at will. Do you hear me? Whatever you do not understand, and that's why you can succeed on purpose. That's why success in my life is not just happenstance. Nothing just happens. It happens on purpose. 
everything, whether it be good or bad, that you are encountering in your lives, it happens, Michael, on purpose. Either you did understand or you didn't understand. And the result, Malcolm, the result of what you don't understand is unfortunately never what people want. It's never what people want. Mm -hmm. And somehow you are convinced that there's nothing you can do about it. Fate would not just have it that way. It happens because you did nothing to be where you are. But you did something. What was the something? Nothing. Nothing is something in this case. And I want to encourage you all to do something more than nothing. It's good. It's good. Is that clear? Yep. Okay, may I go a little further? Mm -hmm. I ask you people a question. May I go further? Go to Proverbs, or, or don't even go there. Let me go through just out of the Rolodex, just out of the memory, just out of the data, just out of the data data. Which is it? Uh, no, out of the downloads of my heart. Ephesians, not Ephesians. Well, I can start Ephesians because I just saw it come up. Did you all see the Lewises on my nightcap? last week. Didn't you so enjoy them? Yeah. They've been married for 73 years. 73 years. And the interviewer asked, how have they been? And she said, it's the word. That's why I want to put emphasis upon the word. This amazing auxiliary that we have as it relates to our music ministry under the auspices of Pastor Timothy Bowman, Jr., which is doing an amazing job, Faith City Music. Yeah, okay, I'm not, hey, 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 don't clap for that. Just, we can't clap for that. No, you can't clap for that. This is <laughs> for? You, you clap for good things that I say about me. Oh. <laughs> there you go, there you go, that's right. But Pastor Dwayne taught us nothing can be held or should be held on the same level as the Word of God. Nothing. And she so exalted the ministry of the Word. Did you hear when they talked about four in the morning, she's in one part of the house, he's in another part of the house, they're worshiping God and feeding their soul and their spirit the word of the living God. And the guy says, how do you get to live to 95? And how do you get to live to 92 and, and be married? For she said, it's the word. Then she'll jump up, Gloria, the, the, Gloria, Psalms 107. No, she says, Psalms 107 says, Gloria, she personalized the word for herself. Now, I like the OG because the OG said, now, mother, <laughs> mother, let's get one thing straight here, mother. God gets all the glory. That's why I'm going to start calling you mother. <laughs> okay. But there was clear understanding and they were strong, and this man was ready to quote or recite the entire book of Ephesians Amen. at 94 years old. I don't want to incite, or neither am I interested in stimulating your emotions in this setting. I don't care if you never get up jump, dance, shout, spin. 
I don't care if you say amen or you don't say amen. All I care about as it relates to this exchange is that you are receiving understanding. And Paul said in Ephesians chapter number one, verse number 18, that the eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that you will what? That you will know. And what I have witnessed, ladies and gentlemen, a lot of believers, believers that are among us don't know what they should know. And furthermore, they are void of understanding of what they know. In other words, I can talk you out of something you think you know. And if I can talk you out of something you thought you knew, then you are in danger of not having good success. Now, mm-hmm. she brought out something very, very important. I asked her this morning, what can't I talk them out of? Mm-hmm. Your name. Do you want me to talk about it? You talked about it further okay, I, this morning. I, I know, but I didn't know you led me into it like that. But I yeah. led you into it like that this morning. Okay. Dang. Yeah. <laughs> but really, like, if I was asking your name, most of you would tell me what your mother told you. And if I was to tell you that your name was something different, you would stand up against me and almost fight against Tooth and me nail. To say that is not my name and you will not allow me to call you a name that is not your name. And so we're... And talking- after a while... You would just never pay me any more mind. Absolutely. Oh, ain't nobody wasting their time. And get mm-hmm. out of my face. You would think I was crazy if I came to you and told you your name was something different, and I constantly told you that. That's and- why when people call you out of your name, what do you get so flustered about? Why? Don't you know who you are? Somebody call you the B word. What's the B word? Why don't you say it? Bless. I, I, I was thinking bless. Beautiful. I don't know what y'all were thinking. Why would that irritate you? It shouldn't, because it's not your name. Like, 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 like my daddy, he always thought his birthday was when, the 25th of April? No, he thought it was like the... The 5th. The 5th. My father's birthday Mm -hmm. was the 25th. Mm -hmm. And mommy thought hers was the 18th of October. Until we went to go get a passport, and they had to get... When did you go get a passport? Like It's been years ago, but... Like, how old was she about, like... I don't know. Like, around... I don't know. I can't Were you grown? Yeah, that's what I just said. I was grown and married. Okay, can we say 20... Okay, so you've been married for 38 years. So 40 years ago, you went to get her a passport? How long? 40. No. 10 years yeah. ago. When they started traveling more with You her. said before you got married. No, uh-uh. I said while I was married. While she was married? Okay, you went to go get her a passport. So you've been married for 40 years, and she's 119. <laughs> how, how old is mom? She's had her passport, Donnie said, 10, maybe 10 to 15 years. Just 10 years ago, she no, found out when her... 15, 10 to 15 years. We've been 15. taking them out of the country more than 15 years ago. Yeah, but you haven't always needed a passport, when, I think, when we... You went. always need a passport uh-uh. to go out of the country. No. You used to use your birth certificate. You couldn't use your doggone birth certificate out of the country. Man, y'all capping. Okay, forget it, forget it. <laughs> but she was a grown doggone woman with children. Yes, yes. Thinking her birthday was another day. Yes, because, you know, back in the day when you were born, your mother would put your, your birth date in the Bible, and that's how they kept up with your birth date. And then she got some information on her birth certificate when it came in the mail 
that it was a different day. So did my dad got it, said it was a different day. And so what we're saying here, you don't want the enemy to step to you with some information that will prove what you know you don't know. You want to make sure you know what you know so when the enemy steps to you, he won't be able to call you out on technicality. That you will put this word in your heart, you will seal it in your heart, and you won't compromise what you know, right? But don't get set on saying that this is the final unless God comes to you and say this is it. Because again, the word of God is inexhaustible. The word of God is always breathing fresh revelation, but it will never go against what it already has told you, right? What's most unfortunate, a lot of people have been told a lot of things from this place and even in this building that has messed you up for a long time and it wasn't true. And so when the truth finally shows up, it's difficult for you to even embrace mm -hmm. until I can show you your birth certificate. Mm -hmm. I can show it to you in the word. Like for eons, people have been calling this the house of God. And they still are. Oh, yeah. There are people in the body of Christ referring to this building as the house of God. That's the most idiotic, ignorant, imbecile thing that I can ever imagine someone doing. Well, after you get revelation, it is. It's dumb. It is. I mean, because I still say, come to church. But that's what we've always called it. And so now to have to have your mind renewed, it's the same way with other scriptures and other principles that are in the Word. Because I still catch myself saying, hey, yeah, church, this. And then you'd be like, oh, well, what? what Ministry, you know, you got to catch yourself. But if you don't have anything in you to catch yourself, to double check it, you're going to stay right there. And so that's why you got to lean in and be attentive and allow yourself to be trained. Say, my body, my body is God's crib. Is God's crib. My body, my body is the house of God. Is the house of God. My body, my body is where he dwells. Is where he dwells. My body, my body is his temple. Is his temple. My, my body, my body is God's, is God's address. Address. He lives, he lives in, in me. me. Even, even, even when people stand here, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of God. And when David said that, it was considered the house of God. Right. It's no longer considered the house of God. I believe if you got a revelation concerning his house, you wouldn't lie like you do. You wouldn't cuss people out like you do. Yeah, you wouldn't do some of the things you do, especially in the area of fornication and adultery. You would not because you would know, oh, Lord, don't let it get this quiet in here when I start talking about <laughs> certain things. Turn to your neighbor and say, I'm glad I got my mask on so he can't see my face. And that's the problem with most places like this. People have been coming in these places for eons with masks. Come out, come out wherever you are. Okay, nevertheless, my intent is to make sure you understand to the degree, once you are taught, you can be teachers. Mm -hmm. Got it? Uh, uh, did I say Ephesians 1 and 18? Yes. Proverbs 4 and verse 7 talks about wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom. <coughs> and with all you're getting, with all you're getting, with all you're getting, wow, I saw something just so pitiful on yesterday on one of these social media platforms, I was looking at something. It was this little girl. Her mother, obviously, or dad, snuck up behind her. She happened to be about eight or nine years old. She was in her room watching maybe some ministry. I don't know, but people were dancing 
on whatever she was watching. They were dancing in a ministry or at a worship center. And she was getting it in her room, boy. She was getting it. And mom or dad didn't want to interrupt her at all. And that little girl was just letting it rip. I mean, dance. I wish I could dance like some of these people can dance. Any real good dancers in here like that, that dance? Uh, no, you can't dance, Pastor Rick. No, Pastor Rick. No, Pastor Rick. No, no, as a matter of fact, no one in your family can dance. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. You can dance a little no, bit. No, no, no one. In, I'm talking it. about be getting it. Like, no. like that Eden, Eden can get it, you know? I don't know anybody else that can dance. Like, Tim, you cannot dance. Yeah, you, you know, I'm talking about when they, they're putting them up, pick, picking them up, putting them down. Who? Leo can dance. <laughs> And if he can, I don't want to give him any attention. <laughs> My point is, the caption read, and the mama obviously typed this up and put it out, the, cap the caption read, I wish I only if I could get her to do this at church. And I said, how sad is that? Here I am working to get you to dance at home. And mama ain't got sense enough to know that if you come here and dance, it ain't no big thing. But to dance at home? No, talk to me. When you dance at the car dealership after somebody else dropped by to put your down payment down. And you, when you're in the restaurant and the waiter comes back and says, Oh, I'm sorry, somebody over here paid for your meal. I'm talking about that's when you dance. I, I'm, I'm talking about dancing when you've had unexpected debt cancellation. I, I, anybody, anybody can come within these four walls and do it, but it's a special individual. And there are a lot of people who dance here who have never danced at home. And here she wants to set that girl up to be like the rest of y'all. <laughs> With all you're getting, get understanding. If you get money, what did you say? If you get a new job, get understanding. If you get a wife, get understanding. And all the husband said. If you get a husband, get understanding. And the lady said, Amen. That's all some of y'all thinking about. Amen. Amen. <laughs> if you get a pastor, and the reason why some of you fluctuate like you do with me is because you don't understand pastor. I should be able to step to you and correct you without your running off, writing me some dumb letter saying, my family and I, we're leaving. I never asked you to come. <laughs> no, don't, don't think, don't think. No, no, don't you dare think for one moment because you get offended by me, you're getting, back at you. you're getting back at me. Just because you leave, you're just perpetuating the ignorance that the devil has been feeding you. And instead of you getting your lives together and understand why God gifted you with me, you get into this tailspin of deception to cause you to disqualify for the good life. I should be able to walk up to you and tell you you're getting too fat. Is that how you would tell us? <laughs> I 
I'm just saying. <laughs> I'll try to be as cordial and polite and diplomatic as possible, but the bottom line is you're overweight, you're killing yourself. And what happens in most cases, people only change when they have to. Wow. And I'm trying to save your doggone life and you're gonna get mad with me because the Spirit of God tells me something about your life that you need to know Oh, Pastor, come on me, tell me I'm overweight. He said, mine has been, I ain't come there for him to tell me about my weight. I came there for the word. Because you don't understand why you've been given the pastor. Now you're trying to change when you have to. The doctor told you, leave all them chitlings alone. Now your blood pressure is like off the scale. This doctor just recently told this man, said, I got some bad news and I got worse news. Which one you want first? The guy said, well, give me the bad news. He said, well, the bad news is that you're going to die in 24 hours. He said, well, what could be worse than that? He said, I was supposed to tell you yesterday. <laughs> Five, four, Three. My point is, my point is, if you get understanding with your pastor, then you'll be able to embrace this relationship a lot better. Look at Proverbs 10:13 quickly, please. 10:13. I want shown on the screen, like I mentioned, and I didn't see it at the eight o'clock. I want to give our e-campus people and our other viewing audience time to give. So in between my time of ministry, please flash up ways that people can give. All right? Wisdom is found on the lips of him or her who has understanding. Wisdom is found on the lips of who? Him. Who has what? Understanding. So if they don't have understanding, wisdom won't be found on their lips, right? Mm -hmm. In other words, you'll never hear wisdom come out of their mouth. It's mm -hmm. only on the lips of those who have understanding. Mm -hmm. And I can clearly determine how many people have understanding by what they say. Amen. But a rod is for the back mm -hmm. of him who is devoid of understanding. A rod, you're going to have to get tired of your backside being whipped. You are void or devoid of understanding. You got to go get so sick of yourself being defeated where you set yourself to get understanding. Now, go to Proverbs chapter number 20. And let's look at verse 5. Come on here now so I can get this out and done. At the rate we're moving, you won't get out of here until at least 1 o'clock. So, so let's speed this up a little bit. Counsel in the heart of a man is like deep water. Counsel in the heart of a man is like deep water. So you have counsel there. It's in the heart of a man but it's like deep water. But, conjunction, a man of who? Understanding. Understanding will what? Draw it out. Draw it out. Give me Matthew 13. Matthew 13. Come on, let me just, let me help you because we're talking about prayer and we're wrapping, finalizing this last element of praying or prayer simply because we've gone through... What you saw today, like what Dee Dee prayed concerning the babies, was what prayer, people? The prayer of what? Consecration and dedication. That's what she prayed. And you can pray that perpetually, perpetually. That's different from the word, the prayer of faith. 
If you will take note, even Jesus prayed some of the same stuff repeatedly in the scripture. He prayed some of the same stuff, especially as it relates to dedication and consecration. He prayed the same stuff. If you look at his praying in the Garden of Gethsemane, he goes back and forth in this discourse or this exchange with his disciples. And the Bible says, and he went back and prayed again. He prayed, Father, let this cup pass from me. He prayed that, but the prayer of faith and the prayer of dedication and consecration. Look at it, read it. You can check out where he taught even further in Matthew chapter 11 concerning teaching them how to pray. And he prayed in an, an entirely different prayer in Matthew chapter number 11. Then he prayed in John 17. Then he prayed in the synoptic gospels as it relates to the garden of Gethsemane. Am I clear with that so far? Because there are many times when we don't see the actual prayer of Jesus. And the same thing in John chapter number 11, where he prayed before the tomb. He said, Father, I thank you that you always hear me when I pray. Now, pray. now some people who are not used to this particular setting of learning, you're going to learn something today, but when you go back into the environment where you have not been learning, this even that you heard today will be removed from you. It will be the equivalent of your not even having an opportunity to hear this. And so the more you are determined and the greater your diligence towards learning, the more will be given to you. It's nothing like it. And people will be drawn to you to help you to understand more of it. I love engagements as such. I love engagements as such. Oh, my word. Where did I want them to go? Matthew 13? Uh -huh. Look at 13, verse number 18. 19 or 18. 18. 18. 18, we can start yeah. there. Therefore, hear the parable of the sower. Let me mm, try to go through this as quickly as possible. When anyone, what did they just read? When anyone. When anyone. What did they just read? When anyone. Is this a Latino one, papi? Yeah. Anyone. Yeah. Well, it, is this a Jewish one? Yeah. Is this an Asian one? Anyone. Is this a black one? Anyone. Yeah. I mean, African American. Is this a, give me a Greek one? Yeah. Is this a Gentile one? Yeah. Is this a saved one? Yeah. Okay, here's where it gets tricky. Is this an unsaved one? Yeah. Huh? Yeah. You mean this is applicable to somebody unsaved? Yeah. Anyone. When anyone. Anyone. What does it say? Anyone. When anyone hears the word of the kingdom, and does not understand it, then I submit to you that the then would not have to be there if they understood what they heard because the only reason why the then is there is because they did not understand. Mm -hmm. But when you understand, you can remove the then. What's so critical about that, my beloved, is the fact that the wicked one is the follow-up to what you don't understand. I cannot or I can get rid of the wicked one when I do or do not understand. So it is so, in, it is so significant. It is so imperative. imperative. It is so important that while I'm getting this word, I'm setting myself to understand Absolutely. what I'm getting Absolutely. and in and, and if and when I do, I can disengage, disengage the enemy from coming after me. Come on. I'm preaching Come on. far better than y'all, but it doesn't matter. 
I don't need your understanding. I don't need your amen. I need your understanding. Then cometh the wicked one to snatch away what was sown in his heart. This is he who receives seed by the wayside. This is he. And it's so disrespectful. The devil is so disrespectful. The Bible says he didn't just come take it from you. The Bible says he snatched it from you. You ever had one of your parents to snatch you? I mean, where your head, they snatched you so hard, they didn't understand you had whiplash. I mean, they just for just snatch you, just, now, uh, 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 what they used to say, I'm going to snatch a knot in your behind. <laughs> You ever had anyone that snatched something out of your hand? Mm. I asked y'all a question. Yes. yes. How'd you feel? Mm. Angry. In some cases, you snatch it back like, hey, hey. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Wait a minute, that's not how you take something from somebody. Or somebody snatch it out of your hand in the street. They're inciting a riot. Sophie and Cresswell. Ooh. That Sophie and Cress. Ooh, I can't wait till Cresswell get up a little higher. <laughs> he gonna knock her no, lights out. Not. Yes, he not is. Gonna he gonna knock her lights ooh. out. That's what Jeff had to do to you and Darnese. He didn't hit us. He just threw us. Jeff, 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 <laughs> Jeff. I understand. Jeff grabbed both of them, picked them up. He's a little brother. He been played all his life, but then he got revelation. These girls can't handle me and picked up both of them at the same time and threw them down on the sofa. What y'all did? We was like, oh, we're not going to mess with him no more. <laughs> See, if the devil, oh, Lord, if the devil keeps snatching stuff from you, it ain't till you stand up and let him know you ain't going to keep taking stuff Come from on. me. Come when on. you going to get tired? I'm tired. Like, thank God for that young woman who stood up here today. The devil took four babies from her. Yeah. God didn't do that. I don't know why people conclude in their uninformed mind. Amen. That's all that is. I wanted to say some other things. But you're uninformed. You're better known as ignorant. You don't understand the word of God. The devil took them babies. That girl didn't quit. That's why I just told her, Elijah shouldn't be off the table. But if you don't want any more, just don't want any more. But don't let that be fear-based because the devil, let the devil know. The kingdom of God suffers violent and the violent. I want it all back. Okay, let's get back to listening here now. Okay, I don't mind y'all shouting in between some time, but don't think I'm closing. <laughs> people, be thinking, people be thinking you close. Oh, he wrapping up right now. <laughs> Verse number 20, come on, I got lots more to tell you. <laughs> But he who receives the, the seed on stony places, this is he who hears the word, immediately receives it with joy. See all that? All that joy stuff, all that feedback. People get excited about it. They don't even understand what they just heard. It sounds good for the moment. Don't let the devil snatch anything. You make sure you snatch. Yeah. Okay. If you don't understand how to do that, that's just rhetoric. It's rhetoric. I'm telling you, don't let the devil do it, and you don't know how. And then you up shouting about something you don't know how to do. I wouldn't let a pastor of mine keep getting away with that dumb stuff with me. And he doesn't mind because it legitimizes the dysfunction of the people that keep him gainfully employed. And he likes the fact you don't know. Just keep bringing your tithes and your offering. 
doesn't want you to grow. I want this thing to get so turned up where y'all don't have to call me for anything. I'm trying to get you slam off me. You don't even have to know my number. Where pastor? Tell pastor I'm going through. You don't tell me nothing. You tell me, man, pastor, the devil tried it this week. I did exactly what you taught me. I bet you he won't try me again. Are you hear what I'm saying? What the heck you gonna call me for? But, 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 uh, uh, until you get to that place, right? Spoken like a true mother. <laughs> true mother of faith. No, no, I mean, she's telling you right. But, 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 come on, when you gonna grow up and stop calling me? Your child, 12, and they coming to you talking about, I'm thirsty. <laughs> you want to look at that child? If you don't get out of my face. No, you supply all the juice, all the sodas, all the water, all the Kool-Aid. You supplied all that. You put it all in the cupboard. You put it all in the pantry. You put it all in the refrigerator. And that 12-year-old stinking child come to you talking about, I'm thirsty. Well, I'm happy to meet you. I'm Michael. <laughs> no, get out of my face. And if you ain't got sense enough, to go in that box and get your yeah. stuff out of that box and get you a cup and get you something to drink, then you will just remain thirsty. But you want, you want me to do stuff with you that you won't even do with your own children. You make a demand on them to grow up. When I demand that you grow up, you look at me like I'm dumb. But you lack understanding. I got to grow you up. Pray for your own dog on bless house. Pastor, you gonna come by my house and bless it. <laughs> At that rate, I'll be going to houses every day. All you blessed people in here that's getting your blessed homes and blessed cars and blessed jobs and blessed increases, bless, bless, bless. Let's go over the, okay, 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 22, 22, hurry up, mm -hmm. 22. Now he who sees, receives seed among thorns, he doesn't want to hear the word, and the cares of this word, world and the deceitfulness of riches choke it out. You deceived by stuff, labels. Gucci got you, <laughs> got by Gucci. Louis Vuitton, decoys. You got more labels in your back, on your back, than money in your accounts. No, 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 no. No, you got all this stuff. But then when I call for $50 for a scholarship offering, you can't even stand up and participate. You deceive. That's why you're working so much overtime and can't get in the word. Because the deceitfulness of riches. You want stuff, stuff more than you want fulfillment. And I'm going to tell you something. That stuff does not come with fulfillment in it. It's void of fulfillment. You'll still be empty. Now, I done got to the point. I like label stuff, all this stuff. They call me a label hole. <laughs> I ain't going to tell you who called me that stuff like that. <laughs> How did I become a label hoe? But I ain't going to buy that stuff if, in fact, I don't have any money in my pocket to distribute. And it's something about that stuff that's more durable than other stuff. To me, just to me, I'm in there with Dee Dee the other day. Uh, 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 I asked her where she wanted to go for uh, uh, her anniversary. I said, let's go to the mall. She said, meet me in the car. <laughs> and we go out there and 
go to Chanel and the, and the lady, tell me all this money. She said, you can only buy one per month. I'm like, why? What in the world is that? She said, because we're trying to can protect the integrity of our product. That these purses, they go up. And this is an investment because the price of this bag will be more later on than it is now. I said, give me three. <laughs> Dee Dee said, let me try that on. And I'm like, try what on? The bag, Mike. I'm like, how do you try on a bag? You, you, you try on pants and shoes and shirt. And then she said, no. You, you try. She put it on and then she turned to the side and her heel came up. That's right. That's how you try on the bag. She tried on a bag. <laughs> Y'all see how I fit? Check the fit. My problem is, you buy all these expensive bags, that bag had to be about $6,000. You spend $6,000 on a bag and ain't got no money to put in. You dumb. No, that's stupid. No, that's you out of control. The deceitfulness of rich. Now you got to work and work and work. And, and I ain't got nothing against Chanel. She got a bunch of Chanel bags. How many did I buy? Two or three of them. You only could get one each, so. Yeah, yeah and she sent me back. I got mine. Go get one in your name. <laughs> And the lady knew, oh, you back here to get Dee Dee out of the bag. <laughs> but the account I started for our seed sowing for next year, October 2023, that account has nearly $50,000 in the savings with it. That just started January the 15th, and it's $50,000 in the savings. We want to give $200,000 or over $200,000 next year. I'm not gonna be buying no Gucci, right. Chanel, <laughs> Louis Vuitton it's when I ain't got it. seed right. to give in the ministry. I'm just, that's understanding some things because it's my seed that get that Come stuff. On. It's Come not on. that stuff that gives this. me seed. Come on, say that again. It's Go my ahead. seed that gets that stuff. Mm -hmm. It is not that stuff to get my seed. And so I put it aside. And all you got to do at the level you are is just follow my freaking lead. I am. And then you go out and teach others. But the deceitfulness of riches is what's messing you up. You got to have it. I was there at one point in my spiritual walk. I ain't got to have that stuff. I told you about the Porsche I wanted. And God said, don't get it. It wasn't because I didn't have the money, but I didn't understand. What do they want for that Porsche, 275? I, I can go out and get the doggone thing cash right now. And it wouldn't bother anything that I'm doing. I can, but God is Lord over my finances. And if you will just acknowledge him and all your ways, and some of you are looking larger than you really are, and your bank account can't, sup, can't support the way you live in. And it's obvious. And if something unexpected comes up, you don't have at least three months in your account to support what you are currently obligated towards. Tell and you got to stop that stuff. There's coming yeah, a day, folks, this understanding is so important because there are going to be other days that's coming up that you will not be able to meet in this place. And your, your being able to overcome in life is going to be predicated on what you understand at home, and your house has to become the lighthouse of God's word. And you're sitting here like everything is peaches and cream. Mm -hmm. We're finally coming out of this pain. I'm telling you, you're just coming out of this one, but very soon we're going into something else. 
and you better have yourselves prepared. I'm talking about water, TP. I'm talking about generators. I'm talking about ammunition. I'm getting it all because I'm going to be stopped. And if you try to come get my stuff, I'm going to have enough ammo to kill Christians and non-Christians alike. You told them to get out of debt. I told you to get out of debt. Stop spending. Sow and save. Sow and save. And the debt you have, don't you dare put out another credit card from this moment forward. Unless you can pay it off. Unless you can pay it off in the next 30 days. Leave them credit cards alone. Some of y'all should go home this evening and have a cut-up credit card ceremony. <laughs> let, let me wrap it up. Let me give you all these scriptures. I gave him all them scriptures. Uh, do they combine my notes with the 8 a.m.? Yeah. Okay, good. So I gave, I, I got a bunch of scriptural references concerning understanding. Go to now Romans. Because I want to be done in the next hour. <laughs> no, you know that's not true. But psh, I wouldn't mind doing. Give me Romans chapter number eight. We're going to do something during the week. We're going to do what? We're going to tell them. We're going to give them more information coming up, coming soon. You're going to be doing it. What am I going to be doing? It's about teaching, but we got we to gotta plan it out good. Oh. Did you all hear the echo has been pushed back? No, I was going to do it at the end. Okay, echo has been... Okay, well, I won't do it at... Romans 8.26. Likewise, the Spirit also helps in our weaknesses. For we do not know what we should pray for as we ought. But the Spirit himself makes what? Intercession. Intercession for us with what? Groanings. Which cannot be what? Verse number 27, please. Now he who searches the heart, he knows what the mind of the Spirit is. Because he makes what? Intercession. For the who? <coughs> Read as we... <coughs> now he... He who searches the heart knows what the mind of the Spirit is because he makes intercession for the saints according to the will of God. He makes intercession, he makes intercession for the saints mm -hmm. of the what? According to the will of God. He makes intercession. The Spirit makes intercession for the saints mm -hmm. according to? The will of God. According to the will of God. Mm -hmm. Verse number 28. And we know that all things work together for good to those who love God, to those who are called according to his purpose. Now, some people are quoting this scripture mm -hmm. out, of without, out of context, without text, and pretext and post-text. And we know all things work together. No, they don't even use and, which is actually what connects, connects this verse to 6 and 7, 26 and 27. They say, we know all things work together for the good. And you know there's been some things in your life that haven't worked together for your good. And conjunction, mm -hmm. and connotes or denotes that that got to be connected to mm -hmm. something out of 27. Mm -hmm. Because in this case, a conjunction which adds what's said before the and mm -hmm. to what's said after the and mm -hmm. to give it text or context, mm -hmm. we know all things work together for good. Those are only things that are birthed by the Spirit right. when you pray in tongues okay. that you pray the perfect will of God. You can pray the perfect will of God. Say, I can pray. I can pray. The perfect will of my Father. The perfect will of my Father. When I pray in tongues. When I pray in tongues. So those of you who do not pray in tongues, you are at a gross disadvantage. Now, go to Jude. What chapter? <laughs> Everybody doesn't know what I'm saying. No. Mm -hmm. Those who are laughing, then good. I'm glad you can laugh. That only indicates one thing. You know there's only one chapter. 
do. Verse 20. But you, beloved, building yourselves up on your most holy faith, doing what? Praying Praying in in the the Holy Spirit. Spirit. You pray in tongues. You build yourselves up in the understanding which produces most holy faith. Now, go to Ephesians chapter number 3. Verse 20. Verse 20. What I so love about this in connecting them all, and I'm, I'm going to close my book so you all can see I'm, I'm closing now. Wow. I'm saying, uh, wow. mm, uh, I'm closing now. Mm, uh, mm, uh, won't he do it? <laughs> Will he, won't he? You can't even do that. I can't That's even do it. It's so mm. dumb. I'm glad it's dumb, because I can't do it. See? The dumbest stuff. Give me something to drink. Let's read it. You read it. Let me drink. Okay. Now to him who is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we ask or think, according to the power that works in us. How, Sway? How does he do exceeding abundantly above what we can ask or think? How does he do, how does Mm -hmm. Holy Spirit Mm -hmm. do things above what we ask? Because, ladies and gentlemen, Mm -hmm. when you pray with tongues, Mm -hmm. you disconnect from your intellect and you pray the perfect will of God, and you pray, you pray beyond your ability to think or ask. Oh, that didn't go over so well. I so rejoice in what I just said. Woo! When I pray in tongues, mm-hmm. I pray above my ability to think, mm-hmm. even to ask. Oh, Lord, I'm going to shout all by myself. Mm -hmm. I said, when I pray in tongues, mm, I pray the perfect will of God enabling me to pray above my ability to even think to ask. I can't even think think to ask ask some stuff that I pray in tongues. Oh, y'all just missed it. I said, I can't even think to ask mm-hmm. some stuff I pray in tongues. Mm-hmm. My tongues exceeds my intellect. Mm-hmm. It's interpreted as the perfect will of God. Yeah. Nothing can interfere or disrupt yeah. what I pray. The devil cannot jam the frequency because he doesn't understand just like I don't understand. And the Spirit of God interprets it as the perfect will of God. Is that clear to you? So then, when I get something, there's a reason why I said, I didn't think it was going to be this big. Oh, I didn't even pray for this. I didn't even pray for this like this. You don't know you didn't pray for this like this. But when you prayed in tongues, you prayed the perfect will of God. Somebody shout! (laughs) Sit down. Y'all think we ready to go. That's why you... We are. We are. And we are. We are. That was good. I'm praying in tongues all the time. All the time, Brother Ajay. While I'm driving, praying in the spirit. While I'm sitting there watching sports. When I'm on Facebook, I'm praying in the spirit. Some of y'all really need to pray in the spirit when you... I don't know how you come up with them doggone posts that you say. You, You need to be healed before you go back on. Or at least get healed before you post something. 
But I'm praying in the spirit because this thing is attacking my body and I don't understand like it was attacking my body this past weekend. And, and I'm saying uh, to myself and to the Lord, okay, what the heck is this? I mean, I was even unable to, well, I could have pressed my way, but since my uh, Uncle Frank, he uh, passed away and his uh, uh, memorial services were Friday, uh, I, just, I, just, uh, I just decided not to go. Uh, he wouldn't have known if I was there or not anyway, you know. I don't know why people make such a, a big ado. It doesn't even matter to me if you come to my memorial service. It, it certainly doesn't. I know people come to pay their respects and all that. Don't think I'm dishonoring or disrespecting those who I have passed away. It's not, I just have a far different perspective than most concerning those seasons. I mean, like my mom when she went to be with the Lord. I never once looked into that box. For what? My mom ain't in that box. I never once had been to the graveyard. Didn't go then, and I ain't never gone ever. Here's one young lady. I, I stopped one time to just meet her. Her name is Lucy. She's married to, I was going to say Ricardo. She's married to, I was going to say Rick, but his name is not Rick. His name is, uh, his name starts with an R, uh, but Lucy, I'll never forget her name. And she's out there almost every day. Her husband of 51 years passed away, and she said, I'm just having the most difficult time. Well, I couldn't just, you know, jump in there and share with her what I know concerning the scripture at that particular moment. Uh, but I'm going to stop out there and just minister to her because you need to understand that my mama never got in the casket. Amen. My mama has never been to the graveyard. The minute that my mama gave her last breath, she went immediately into the presence of the Lord. Amen. And there's some things that I need to explain and to express to you all. And if you need to know right away, because the overwhelming spirit of grief, grief is destroying the cadence and the rhythms of life for you. You, you, you call my office so we can break that demonic foul mm -hmm. spirit of grief mm -hmm. and, and, and grieving off of your mind. But my, my point being, uh, I, I was feeling so bad, so I was just praying in the spirit. That next morning, I woke up and I said, uh, uh, this is what the Spirit of God gave me. I never once thought antibiotics, antibiotics. I turned to Dita, I said, uh, call Kia or, or my doctor so I can get some antibiotics. And she said, it's done already. I said, what's done? She said, I called in, uh, your doctor and ordered some antibiotics for you. I said, dang, that's pretty cool. Unbeknownst to me, Tim comes to me and shares with me, like, was it yesterday? Last night, he come to me. He said, Pastor Kim called him and said, Pastor needs to be on some antibiotics. Well, when Dee Dee, when Dee Dee woke up that morning and told me she had already called him in, and then Pastor Kim called Tim, Tim told her, to call Dee Dee, but Dee Dee never spoke with. I, I spoke to Tim. You before, spoke to before the yesterday. Yeah, somehow all this stuff is going on on my behalf, and I don't even know it. But I'm praying in the spirit. I didn't never ask. I didn't even think about antibiotics, but I'm thinking by the spirit of God as I pray, something's building in my system. The devil is literally trying that trick he tried before that I wasn't woke on. And the antibiotics started right away attacking because I had to be in New Orleans, New Orleans yesterday. Mm -hmm. Well, Friday evening. 
I performed the wedding then, jumped back on the jet, came home, stayed in the bed, stayed in the bed pretty much all day yesterday. Well, about what time I get out of that bed? Four o'clock? Four o'clock in the evening. Yeah. Something like that. Just chill and hang out. Those antibiotics went to work. My point being, I prayed in the spirit concerning it. Pastor Kim is alerted to this thing. I never spoke to her about she, What did she say when she called you? She called me and said, um, she called me and said, hey. And I felt like I just heard the Lord say. She, she was what? She, was, she called me randomly and said, <laughs> hey, Tebow, I was praying, and I feel like I just heard the Lord say that Pops needs to be on some antibiotics, change of the weather or whatever, and he needs to get on it now. Well, I called Ma to see how she should go about it, and Ma just said, you know, whatever, and um, no, the message never got to you. The message never got to me. I woke up saying, give me some antibiotics. <laughs> how he's able to do Exceeding abundantly. Woo! Shout somebody, shout. So if you're not filled, if you're not filled with the spirit, with the evidence of speaking with the tongue, those of you of you are watching virtually, and those of you who are here, come down to be filled with the Spirit of God. Those of you who need a pastor who, ooh, and I didn't give you the scripture reference I really wanted to give, but I gave it this morning. Thank Maybe you. this evening, I'll just go on to expound. That's right, come on. There are others, especially, especially as it relates to this pastor piece, you need to come and make me your pastor today. Yeah, oh, my man, my main man. I, I, I so love this guy right here. I mean, I, I don't even know Poppy like that, big Poppy. And that's what I call him. That's what everyone else. You know, it takes one to know one. G's, no G's. <laughs> if you're here, you're not filled with the Spirit, you're not a partner in the church, or you're not certain that your name would be found in the Lamb's Book of Life, come right now, please, hurry. Praise God. All right. So that I'm not belaboring this moment, uh, who's working with me and for me? Oh, okay, praise God. This, uh, she's like a plant. Mm -hmm. She's standing there as though she's encouraging others to come. She's going to escort you to another part of the facility, give you some information, receive some information for you, pray for whatever spiritual need you may have, and then dismiss you. Nothing strange, weird, spooky is going to happen, I promise you, every spiritual need will be met. Let's give them a great round of applause. Let's talk about extra before we go offline. Those of you who have not had an opportunity to give in our virtual space. We want to make sure you give your tithes and offering right now. We want to make sure you're sowing your seed of faith. The information is on the screen to assist you in doing so. Remember these words. Oh, I want to say this echo. <laughs> echo, he just mentioned that echo has been moved to May the 12th. Make sure you make note of that because I don't want everybody to prepare to come and not. And Lottie, Dolly, everybody, I want you back here in place yep. next week. for our resurrection 9 celebration. 9.30, 930 9 next 30 week. 9.30 at, every, at every campus except Temple Hills. Yeah. So 9.30 here next week. All right, remember these words found in 2 Corinthians chapter number 5, verse number 7. Yeah. For we walk by faith, not by sight. No doubt about it. We'll see you.